Hey everybody, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here and on this series we're talking about the acts of the Holy Spirit because I believe that God is still moving. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. In fact, in these days, God is moving even more. There's an increase of supernatural spiritual activity. So we need to be equipped and ready for what God's doing. But in this series, the acts of the Holy Spirit, today I'm talking to you on episode 7, I'm talking to you about uncommon unity uncommon unity because whenever there is a move of God there will also be a separation whenever there's a revival I've realized many times whenever there's a genuine spirit of revival it will separate the group there will actually be division many times people think they want revival but it will cost them everything and when a genuine revival genuine move of God comes people are not willing to pay the price they want the benefits and the blessings of revival, but they don't want to serve. They don't want to put in the time. They don't want to sacrifice. It takes a lot of work. I remember the first time I did a 21-day revival, and uh, I, I mean, my goodness, we believed in revival. We prayed for it. We wanted it. But when this, this unusual grace to extend these revival meetings took place, uh, our leadership team was burnt out. People were angry with me. People were angry that I was extending, that I was believing in God to extend and to go longer. And we eventually went for 21 days. But whenever it comes to the greater things of the Spirit, it will always divide groups. And so be careful what you pray for. Because you may not want, you may not know what you're praying for. And sometimes when you get what you're praying for, it's not actually what you want but it's what God wants. So, uh, you know, I come to realize that whenever revival or genuine move of God takes place, there is separation and there is division, separation from the fake and the phony and the false, and there is separation and a unity with the right people to go to the next level. Uh, however, we see that even in the book of Acts, that there was uncommon unity. There was a great grace for the believers to gather and to fellowship, to partner and to become one. And whenever there is a genuine revival or move of God, there's separation, but it is unto greater unity. It is unto greater unification. And unity doesn't mean uniformity, but it means diversity. Different tongues, nations, tribes, anointings, gifts coming together and becoming one under the banner of one headship called Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Word of God here. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts 2, 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. You see, unity is contagious. That's where we get the word common unity or community. Community is where there's a group of people who have a common unified ideal or common unified idea value. So common unity, community is a commune or a group of people that have common value systems and beliefs. And a lot of people want community. But let me tell you, without the right doctrines or the right beliefs, you want to have community. I want to tell you, Today, there is a false form of community in the church. People just want a fellowship. Whereas like my friend Robbie says, they like to eat and fellowship, so they actually begin to fellowship. Because you're eating so much with fellowship that your body changes shape, so you fellowship. Right? But too many people are soulish and carnal, where we want a fellowship, coffee and donuts. We just want to talk, hang around, lounge around, talk about games and movies, watch movies. It's so carnal. I'm not, I'm not speaking against that, but if it's only that, and if it's only one-sided, then you are missing out on what true community is. Because community is a wineskin for the new wine. And I don't know about you, but I want the new wine, which means God is raising up new wineskins. Supernatural communities. Communities that are filled with the Holy Ghost. Most communities 
will have certain levels of blessings. And God loves family. God loves community. God loves relationships. But God does not want us to be carnal where we're just coffee and donuts and video games and movies. God wants us to be supernatural where the Bible here says they were in awe and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. You need to ask yourself, are you part of a community where the signs, wonders, and miracles? Are you part of a community where you are in awe of the Lord? Are you a part of a community where you are astonished, where your, your eyes are googly eyes? You have eyes like deer in a headlight, like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Where you're just being blown away by the power of Jesus Christ. Or are you in a part of a church community where you're a part of the mundane? You talk more about secular things than about spiritual things. You talk more about what you watched on Netflix. You talk talk more about, you know, different carnal things than the kingdom of God. I believe every true revival will have uncommon unity, which means what? They're unified on a main goal. They're unified on Jesus. They're unified on being all in, all out, sold out for Jesus. The Bible here says, verse 42, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. It doesn't say the fellowship and then the apostles' teachings. Hear me now. It says the apostles' doctrines and then fellowship. How can I be in fellowship with you if we don't believe in the same thing? First, they had agreement with the apostles' teachings. If you believe the same things I believe, then we can be together. But if you don't believe in what I believe, talking in tongues, casting out devils, um, walking and moving in the Holy Ghost, believing in the gifts of the Spirit, believing in the prophets and prophecies, if you and I don't believe in the same apostolic teachings, then why should we ever be in fellowship with one another? The Bible says, how can two walk together if they are in disagreement? How can you and I be together or even do things together if we believe differently? And that's the thing. Even before you marry somebody, before you marry a spouse, you have to understand, do you believe in the same things? Do you have agreement in the same core values? You have to ask yourself, is, the, uh, uh, is your spouse, is it the opposite sex, do they even believe in Jesus? Do they even believe in the same things about the Holy Spirit? Because you have to be equally yoked. Too many people are unequally yoked. Stop trying to have fellowship with believers that are unequally yoked with you. Stop trying to waste time fellowshipping, fellowshaping, being carnal, doing dinner meetings. Who cares? Stop trying to just believe in God, believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. Rebe kara, pray in the Spirit, and God will gather the right community, the right people around you. Don't trade in the more of God to be around people. And that's the thing. Too many people have a need for codependency or to be affirmed by others. Listen, we need the body. You cannot be isolated. You're not called to be an island. There are times of separation. There are times for you to be consecrated unto God, like John the Baptist was in the wilderness, like Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days, 40 nights. But doesn't mean you're meant to be an island. We're called to be part of the body. But too many people, in the sake of having their needs met, their soulish carnal needs met, and fellowshipping with others, you throw in the supernatural. You throw in the priority of spending time in a secret place in God's presence first for the corporate public life. Too many people have public lives but have secret sin. Too many people do not have secret prayer, therefore they have public failure. We need to honor the secret place. We need to have a balance with the secret and the public. Us public figures, you and I, you may be a public figure, I'm a public figure, but we need to honor the secret place more than ever before. But I'm saying this because too many people want to connect, want to network want to have fellowship with people, partnership. But how can you be in the right partnership if you don't believe in the same things? They first believed in the apostles' teachings. It's about doctrine. The apostolic is not about demonstration. It's about doctrine. Fathers teach children what to believe. Families teach people how to believe. 
So number one, how do you know you're meant to be in fellowship or connection with somebody? Do you believe in the same things? And people say they believe in the same things. But if the fruit is not there, then they don't believe it. They just say it. Show me your faith. You say you have faith, show me your faith. For faith without works is dead. If you got faith, show it and prove it. Show me what you got. However, many people say that they believe in the same thing, but they don't. They do not. So number one, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers and awe came. Do you want to be a part of a group where you're in awe of the Lord? Or do you want to be a part of the group that's comfortable? It's a retirement home. It's a convalescent home. You just want to be safe. Oh, the devil is a liar. Many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. The Bible says all who believed had things together in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings. When it's a true revival, when God is really moving, people don't care about eating. People don't care about sleeping. <laughs> people don't care about their financial bills being paid, their mortgage bills being paid. When God is truly moving, it gets people jealous. It wets their appetite. It gets them thirsty and hungry for more. You need to get hungry for God. You need to get hungry for Jesus. Are you hearing me? You need to get hungry for the Lord. And when this move of God in the book of Acts happened, people began selling their possessions saying, I don't want to be held down by my world. I don't want to be held down by these earthly carnivores, but I want to be part of this move of God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, those days are coming back again in America. Those days are coming back again. And the Bible says, they distributed all the proceeds, attended the temple, break and bread. So there was a lot of fellowship every day, day after day. When you're in revival, you love being together with people. Boom, when there is no spirit of revival, there's dissension, there's envy, there's jealousy, there's hatred, there's gossip, there's slander, there's fornication, there's sin. Then all the books of the epistles are being written out to the churches. We need the fire again. You need to revive a Holy Ghost Pentecost fire again. But that word fellowship in the Greek is koinonia. Many people know that word koinonia. That word koinonia means partnership. It means to participate. It means to share in. God wants us to be in koinonia with one another. But it only comes... In the spirit of God. You can have fellowship with baseball cards, golf. You can have fellowship with business, but it's not the same if it's not in the spirit. What are you partnering with? What are you participating towards? Let me tell you, there is a day right now where God is releasing uncommon unity amongst the church. You want revival? There will be division and separation. But whenever there is a genuine revival, there will also be uncommon unity with the hungry, true remnant of the earth. Revival or bust, revival or die. There is an uncommon unity being released. Don't make the world, the left, the one world order, all these people that are uh, praising and lifting up banners of community and oneness and tolerance and acceptance. Those are all false Pax Romanas of a true Holy Ghost Spirit-filled unity looks like. In the words of Lou Engel, only a united church can heal a divided nation. And we will only have true unity if it's in the Holy Spirit of God. Are you ready for uncommon unity? Are you ready for that oneness where people sell all their possessions and belongings and they begin to praise God and there's awes and miracle signs and wonders taking place and there's people being added on daily. Are you ready for that? I believe when a genuine revival happens and in these days of the acts of the apostles and of the Holy Ghost, we will see more of this uncommon unity. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. I pray 
that this word blessed you. And whenever there's new wine being poured out, God is looking for new wineskins to be entrusted. I pray that you will create community around you. God bless you and thanks for watching episode 7 titled Uncommon Unity with this new series called Acts of the Holy Spirit.